हेलो एवरीवन आई एम नितेंद्र सिंह प्रेसिडेंट इंडियन यूथ न्यूक्लियर सोसाइटी आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू द फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ बीइंग इनफॉर्मल विद एज दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट वी फेस्ड अ फ्यू टेक्निकल ग्लिचेस मेनली इन द ऑडियो सेक्शन टू रेक्टिफाई देम द लाइव वीडियो हैज बीन एडिटेड एंड वेर एवर रिक्वायर्ड अ वॉइस ओवर विद द एक्सप्लेनेशन हैज बीन एडिड थैंक यू फॉर योर सपोर्ट एंड इंजॉय द फर्स्ट एपिसोड okay so i welcome all of you to this uh, new initiative and uh, a new kind of talk show where uh, we want to introduce you to our uh, eminent scientists of the nation this is for the first time we are trying to do such thing it's an informal interview to to start with and uh, we are very privileged to have uh, dr anil kakodkar with us sir uh, i i don't think sir need a an introduction uh, so to say he is such a personality and i don't think i can just uh, say that he is uh, but few few key positions which uh, he held uh, in the past he was the former uh, chairman of atomic energy commission for quite a long time he was the secretary to department of uh, secretary from department of atomic energy to government of india and still if you ask me there is a list of position he he is still holding like a chairman of scientific advisory committee to ministry of petroleum and natural gas to solar energy research advisory council to uh vithal rao joshi trustees trust and um, rajiv gandhi science and technology commission and so on i think i must take one a uh, complete session for the introduction only but just one thing i really want to mention here as uh, dr manmohan singh said when he was the prime minister at that time like uh, he is the man who saved our nation like i'll start with this uh, statement uh, so i welcome you sir first of all uh, thank you thank you sir so uh, so uh, let me begin we'll begin directly so the format is like we have already as i mentioned it, it's it's very informal uh, discussion so to say so i'll start with one very quick question with, to you sir like uh, do you really enjoy traveling how do you think you you are uh... well not that i enjoy traveling but traveling has become a, or had become a part of life thanks to this pandemic now i am locked in the house for last four months so i am enjoying being in the house so uh, no the point is uh, traveling for leisure sightseeing is a good thing enjoyable thing traveling for work particularly when you have several things back to back is no enjoyment but it had become a part of my life so i won't say i didn't enjoy but uh, certainly that's not uh, something that uh, one aspires for technical glitch uh, voice over begins i must add to it that your trips and journeys have been really important for india uh, one such trip which i want to talk about and the importance of uh, choosing this date uh, is that last year uh, sir came here at ether ka darash to hand over the cryostat to ether organization cryostat is one of the uh, important component of fusion reactor which india is uh, providing to the ether organization so i want to begin uh, this show by mentioning this journey sir uh, my question to you is that uh, what was the key part as well as the importance of uh, your trip um, for for um, our nation also um, sir what was the uh, personal what was your personal experience uh, associated with this trip sir expressed his gratitude towards the ether organization for inviting him 
to be a part of the Kronstadt handover ceremony. He also mentioned this handover was a milestone for the ether organization. Furthermore, he mentioned that it was a great opportunity for him as he was privy to everything that was happening. Sir explained that when the ether project was commissioned into making, several years elapsed before the major milestone and this cryostand was made in India. The decision to make the cryostat in India was uh, one of the biggest and the last engineering decisions as far as the cryostat was concerned. Sir again emphasized in any dimension this was a very important trip and ceremony to celebrate the major technological achievement and a major milestone in ether technical glitch over to celebrate a major uh, milestone in india's contribution to ether to celebrate an important milestone in ether project itself and for me personally that gave me an opportunity to go around the site and see the progress and in fact that was the first time i had visited uh, cadrash the eater cadrash in the sense the eater site i had been to cadrash labs earlier but the the eater site and so uh, it was uh, a very memorable event for me and uh, it's just wonderful that i happen to be amongst the group uh, which i spent uh, those two three days uh, at kadrash uh, and minos uh, prabhat kumar is there bharadwaj is there uh, barua is uh, there and i don't know maybe there are more people uh, so it's just wonderful uh, to be able to uh, kind of meet uh, meet again uh, and then uh, this time uh, this is in a virtual mode which itself is uh, also you know this it has become a part of my life just like traveling had become a part of my life i have hold on an average one meeting or sometimes two meetings a day in this mode virtual mode so traveling is not missing in the house uh, coming back to uh, the cryostat i also uh, sort of uh, i can't say i witness per se but uh, at least i saw some glimpses of the uh, the final part the top lid of the crust that being completed uh, larsen and to bro hazira uh, side and uh, the uh, that day it was flagged off from here and i so as far as the manufacturing of the shop manufacture of the uh, cryostat was concerned that was completed of course there is more work to be done at uh, eater site uh, and, and uh, it's good to see eater making progress and uh, i still look for forward to the day when uh, eater will have its first shot thank you sir thank you sir uh, uh, indeed indeed it, it, it's, it's really it's, important for us for like uh, your your uh, visits but before that just a quick uh, thing here uh, please mute your mics because uh, it will create the echo just to to all of you please but uh, i can keep my mic on no otherwise I yes sir you can you can keep your mic on sir okay yeah, yeah. thank you thank you thank you sir so uh, like um, before that if i remember correctly in 2006 you also made one trip to sign this uh, this deal with with uh, with france for india's participation in uh, fusion uh, reactor program 
how you 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 will uh, um like please put some insight on the, this part like the importance of fusion technology for india and how it's it, it, it will help in india's development for uh in future there have been uh, a couple of letters from president, president shira, shira to, to to prime, prime minister bajpi at that time uh, suggesting that it would be a good idea for india to be uh, a partner in uh, in inter project uh and uh, so we were also kind of uh, uh, making that assessment uh, looking at the you know after all whenever you are talking about a high cost project you have to make uh, uh, the what, what you, you call, call go through a due diligence, diligence. So, so that, that was all the process we were, we were going through when this proposal came, came in, in. and uh, after, after that, that Uh, it, it was decided, decided that, that yes, uh, I think it would be worthwhile for India to uh, be a part. And, and then uh, I had written a letter to European Union, Union because European Union, when Mr. Bhuvan come on behalf of European Union at that time, to inviting a team from a team European from Union European to Union to visit you for plasma research, research. For plasma research. and uh, and. Uh, Uh, so that they can get so that they can get a understand about team. india's readiness in terms of fusion technology uh and they came very promptly i think within uh, uh, i think uh, a month month and a half the eu team was here i remember it it was a diwali day when i met him here in mumbai after the they visited gandhi nagar went round the ipr facilities and came back in the evening and then after that uh, when you sort of completed their formalities about uh, inviting india uh, we approached all other members of peter project through diplomatic channels and uh, then the process took place and uh, so it was decided that yes india will be a part uh, and then there was uh, some time in terms of negotiating the the inter agreement of course some work had already happened earlier on but the negotiation was still going on and then uh, there were two major events one was a signing uh, event uh, one was in brussels and one was in uh, paris i don't recall which took place earlier and which took place later but uh, they were uh, within a short time of each other uh, and uh, in the paris uh, meeting signing meeting uh, president chirac himself was present uh and uh, in the brussels meeting uh, the uh, the president of european union and uh, all member states of european union uh, they were present and so there was uh, a major uh, event uh, to formally launch the iter project and then of course there were uh, a number of meetings at working level uh, uh, and i did attend some of them and i remember one of them was held in india uh, where uh, i think it was eater council street not and and then uh, of course the work went on i also remember at this stage uh, professor ka because he was the champion not that i was not the champion but uh, he, he was the 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 primary driver for india's fusion energy program and uh, i realized interacting with iter partners what kind of respect uh, he commands among all iter partners and in fact he was also the the chairman of uh, some scientific body 
scientific review committee or advisory committee or something like that, uh, which carried out the design review when there was a, a certain amount of change in the design, uh, uh, which was also incorporated, that of course led to a bit of cost increase, not as much as what we are seeing now, but it did lead to some cost increase. And uh, so I think uh, that was the the early stages of eater eater journey. Uh, the all members of eater together, I think they constitute uh, a very large part of humanity. I don't recall, but it may it, it may be close to two thirds. Or certainly more than half of humanity, and uh, so uh, that is the force with which uh, we are all trying to tame uh, fusion energy for the development, the sustainable development of the world at large, uh, meeting uh, requirements of all countries and all people without. Being uh, worried or without getting challenged by the climate change threat, which is very important, and, uh, and certainly we are all looking forward to fusion energy becoming a reality. So my compliments to all of you, those who are working on ITER project. Uh, it's a massive project by any standard. And uh, a path-breaking project. Uh, it will it will certainly mean a major inflection point in the history of the world, and more particularly history of energy for the world. Thank you, sir. Thank for you, this, sir, for uh, this detail, 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 historical, historical uh, uh, thought inside. Thought thing. Thing. And as you and rightly I, mentioned, it's one of the largest mention uh, project. If you see, like it's a on a part of globe a major part is uh, covered by uh, ether associate here i want to uh, bring uh, our guest uh, uh, mr ujwal barua he is the project director of ether india to to put some um, highlight on uh, sir's visit uh, last time because he he was accompanying you on that uh, visit uh, barua sir uh, barua sir please if you could join us Thank you, Nitendra, and uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And uh, it is definitely was a pleasure to accompany Dr. Kakotkar last year, uh, and then uh, at that point again, as Dr. Kakotkar has mentioned, we missed Professor Kao being there because he, these two persons, as I knew, uh, they were the people who spearheaded the. Uh, participation of ITER from the very beginning. And uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, this being a foot soldier in this whole process of construction of ITER, is remember this is at the moment in the construction of ITER. And uh, we are trying our best to do all different kinds of a, uh, what you call the first of the kind systems uh, that is being specified for ITER. This is the mind-boggling uh, dimensions of the uh, of an experimental device. When the, we talk about experimental devices, usually a smaller devices you make in the laboratory, and from there we simply jump to something which, as you uh, have uh, noticed, uh, and Dr. Kakutkar was telling, um, it's a 30 meter diameter uh, tall vessel about the cryostat, which was part of it uh, completed and handed over to the ITER organization uh, on behalf of India by Dr. Kakutkar last year around this time. I forgot the exact date, you might have recalled it properly. And uh, well, uh, uh, this was uh, wonderful to be there last year around this time, meeting you people, meeting you. Uh, and with Dr. Kakutkar around. Uh, what I was probably being a member of the team who is spearheading the Indian participation, I would probably like to seek opinion from Dr. Kakutkar whether he, 
he calibrated, how does he calibrate our achievement with respect to what was his original expectation as he started the project or he started signing the agreements probably some 10, 12 years back. Well, I thought today we are in good so don't mode, ask, so don't so ask any Indian Indian But uh, yeah. anyway, uh, see, uh, let me be frank about this. And uh, because, uh, as, in fact, I have written it somewhere that uh, when uh, Eater uh, proposal was uh, kind of making rounds whether India should uh, be a part or not be a part. On th in terms of the technology, in terms of uh, R and D achievements, I had a huge inner urge that India should be a part. But uh, at that time. Uh, I think it was going to cost something like a little more than uh, 2,000 crore or 2,400 crore. Barua can correct me. And uh, But that itself was a huge sum for me as far as India is concerned. And uh, see, the point is, uh, uh, as far as India is concerned, India's energy or electricity needs are huge and uh, there are lots of expectations from uh, atomic energy in terms of meeting that need and uh, somehow even on fission we are growing but so also other electricity producing systems are growing so in terms of our share percentage contribution, it is remaining more or less where it was. And uh, that it is not growing is a matter of worry for me. And, uh, and so, of course, there are many reasons. Money is not the only reason. But uh, I had my own worries at that time, whether uh, we should be spending that kind of sum uh, on fusion technology at this stage or accelerate the uh, the power program and uh, that power program should not run short of money in, in any way. Now, uh, of course, you also know at that time there was, uh, there were severe constraints on, uh, on Indian nuclear program uh, by way of uh, NSG restrictions, embargo and so on. And that was another front we were working on to sort of uh, get an NSG waiver so that we can access uranium from outside. And that was one of the constraints to be overcome to accelerate nuclear power program. And uh, anyway, to cut the long story short, at some stage in those discussions, it appeared that India joining ITER would in fact help softening or, uh, you know, the, the restrictions on India or getting NSG restrictions removed or something. You know, it's a larger uh, nuclear politics uh, internationally. And so it was a well-considered decision uh, looking at the totality of things that, yes, let us uh, join, uh, join ITER. Uh, because after all, it will help us in uh, uh, accelerating uh, the fusion technology effort in the country. But at the same time, it will help the larger nuclear energy program. Uh, and, and so, but uh, the fear I had about the cost. So now the, whatever cost was uh, projected at that time, that looks quite small compared to the costs that are, you know, that we are seeing now. And that is uh, a point which is a little bit uh, worrisome. Uh, so, uh, of course, not that our domestic projects also, there is a lot of cost increase. 
and i quite understand why the cost and time schedules increase particularly in technology complex projects but uh, at the same time as the projects become bigger as the project outlays become bigger i think uh, the control has to be little better and that is the same feeling i have with respect to with respect to iter but uh, i think uh, leave that for a discussion on some other time today is time to kind of uh, uh, celebrate or talk good things so because you know that that in no way reduces uh, the importance of the effort the achievements done by people uh, the main contribution historic contribution that is taking place uh, in terms of uh, both the energy needs and the sustainability requirements in the world uh, but uh, but that's a fact that uh, you know uh, the costs have gone up uh, quite substantially but having said that i would also say that uh, and this i had uh, discussed when i was in in kadrash and i have discussed this in india that uh, that is while we recognize all these issues but indian participation in iter having decided to be a part must be aggressive we must make sure that we learn all the technologies we must make sure that there is uh, what shall i say uh, assimilation of those technologies within the country and there must be a domestic activity to move forward because if that connectivity doesn't exist then the people who did this work at iter when they come back to india they will get into something else and the effort uh, in a fairly large measure would get diluted so uh, that is another thing i'm it's not new uh, i have spoken this many times but uh, but i think all this does not reduce the importance of indian participation in iter that is uh, that is uh, certainly very important and uh, it's also important to be very proud of that participation and the achievements made thank you sir thank, thank you. you so much yes uh, i i completely agree with you on this part because uh, when i interact with the people who are working here in uh, in in kadras they all are really really uh, uh, excited and uh, they feel so proud that they are being a part of such an uh, important project for the nation and one such person we have as our guest uh, mr uh, anil kumar bhardwaj he is the uh, leading person of uh, cryostat uh, section here in uh, kadras i invite uh, bhardwaj sir to 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 put some light on uh, uh, how how do you felt uh, and how the people who were working with you felt when uh, sir joined us on on a, on a personal uh, uh, ground the motivation the encouragement they received please sir yeah thank you mr nidendra uh, good afternoon to everybody first uh, i would like to share my personal uh, experience was when uh, we got to know the information that dr kopkar will join us here at the handover ceremony it was a great motivation to us because uh, we know uh, about uh, his contribution and uh, he's uh, given a lot to the nuclear uh, world of the uh, india and i think he's like one of the father of the nuclear program of the uh, india so it was a great uh, motivation to all crested team not only me but its whole team and i would like to thank uh, for giving uh, us time and uh, it was a good interaction with him and we feel like a very very conversant like a, we met uh, him earlier and he make us feel like uh, very very normal his very his, his status is very high but uh, we feel that day it's like a, we and we are contributing to the nation and he is part of one of the motivator of us so that is the feeling uh, 
was shared by each of uh, the cry state team members uh, meeting with dr kapoorkar and uh, about the cry state uh, what i can say he uh, praised all of us uh, for this this is the cry state is the one of the largest uh, vacuum vessel of the world so is everything is huge and uh, another appreciation for me in that he has not seen such a big component uh, in his life so that was a big compliment for us also so i could remember his compliment during the visit of the cast at base section so thank you for his uh, compliment to team and also the welding and quality and uh, the full manufacturing quality he appreciated uh, for us so i would like to say that uh, for crested contribution uh, we could show to the world that uh, we could do uh, all technological things uh, which we are really take challenge and our indian team is compatible to take any challenge in the world at or at any of the organization this is i would like to say thank you thank you sir thank Great. you so much uh, i think sir please you want to add something no no i just said i share that very much exactly sir uh, i have one one short uh, message for you from from uh, uh, one of the, the the person who who was there uh, at that time during uh, uh, the visit i have a message from mr manoj panchal uh huh uh for you sir okay good morning everyone i'm manoj panchal working in inter france uh, since uh, 2015 as a thermal shield engineer i got the opportunity to interact with uh, one of the greatest scientists of this uh, world uh, shri anil kakolkar ji in uh, 2019 uh, despite uh, everyone knowing very well about sir i would like to say a few things about sir which i felt uh, during our meeting last year um i never see such a person who has a tremendous patience and calmness his uh, personality is very very impressive sir is a sir is the source of our motivation today also i feel sir has a very great positive energy like uh, 18 years cha 18 years uh, young person i will be always thankful to him it is because of sir initiative india is a part of one of the biggest scientific project and like uh, me many many people get a chance from Uh, to contribute to clean and green energy research project which is the most important uh, things in the, for our planet finally i i pray for sir's very long and healthy life thank you jai hind hello everyone i am amit pawar from bars i have been working at iter since 2016 Dr Anil Kakotkar is one of the most prominent leader of Indian nuclear establishment under his leadership India became member of ITER organization we were very excited to know about his visit to ITER last year for handing over ceremony of uh, cryostate components i had never imagined that i would ever meet him in person and it was a dream come true for me he is a very keen observer he can read between the lines very easily and there are a lot of things to learn from him during his visit he met families of indian staff here at iter we also went to see many places in south of france we visited a place called gauche du verdun a very beautiful valley 60 km from iter second day we went to see the highest point at french italian border around 350 km from here and on the last day we visited a botanical garden near manosque 
His visit motivated us immensely and I urge him to visit ITER more frequently to see the progress we are making here and to guide us to demonstrate fusion as a viable source of energy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Panchal and uh, Mr. Ramit Pawar for your kind words and memories. Um, now, continuing with our discussion, I'd like here to now invite um, Dr. Prabhat Kumar, who's going to join us live from Ether. He's the part of uh, the advisory team to Director General of Ether. I would uh, emphasize on two things here. Uh, which would like, uh, which we would like to hear from uh, Prabhat sir. Uh, one is the personal time which we got to spend with Kakutkar sir here um, when he, he when he uh, visited us last last year, and how motivating it was for all of us. And the second part um, is you headed the Bhavani for quite a long time and. Um, you were the first CMD of the Bhavani for almost 10 years. So some glimpses about the uh, fast video reactor program of uh, India. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much to contribute to clean and very nice and research project. That you know, we spent time important, with Dr. Kamutkar. Uh, Any uh, moment is spent for our planet. I have realized for years together with Finally, Dr. Kamutkar is enriching. And so was when you, sir, came to Kadrash. We spent formal time in the eater. We spent informal time outside. You address all the Indian staff. And that was extremely motivating and enriching. It is something to learn from the persons of you know, who have great stature and who have tremendous experience that how they have built the nuclear power program and how much commitment they have got for all that they have done in the past, and they want this thing to grow and uh, progress as the time comes. Undoubtedly, the non-fossil fuel programs has to grow. ITER is one of them because uh, it's, it's one of the nuclear projects. And sir, uh, everybody is aware that was not only associated with the nuclear, was associated with the also, solar had to do something with the wind and all alternative sources of energy. But I was trying to say that all the younger generations, and certainly I am younger to Dr. Kakotkar, but you know, I am also talking all the younger generations, which will be tomorrow's leaders, must learn that whatever you have to do must be done with the total commitment and with the passion. And if you are not convinced, Better get out from that one and leave that particular position and uh, and uh, take alternative assignments. Now, this, uh, if I take my uh, ITER tenure, it's extremely enriching because this particular project is very, very good project. Not only with a large size equipment, technologically it is extremely advanced and it deals with something which has never been experienced and wants to make it a reality. Now, in India too, we have done this thing. When we started with fission program, almost we were alone with the trade embargo. Everything we had to learn of our own and we had to close the fuel cycle and every technology we had to develop of our own. It's not that Indian nuclear program uh, has got any inferior procedures. We have got very, very robust procedures and that's how actually we have been successful. We have been successful in closing the fuel cycle. We have been successful in demonstrating some of our reactors, almost best in the world. Very, very long operating period. Safety record, one of the best. Our professionals are second to none in the world, but always there are opportunity of learning from the ITER also. And all the people who are working at ITER, when they go back to the country, they should try to propagate the knowledge which they have gathered here within the department and outside the department. Let the knowledge spread, the good working and the good procedures and the good methods which are there 
including management practices and techniques, documentation, etc., etc., etc. So outside the department also, not, not only to the large organization, also to medium and micro, small and micro industries also, so that our country grows. Now, Nitendra, you also talked about the, about the fast breeder program. India, for India, fast breeder program is one of the most important and vital, as Dr. Kakutkar always has been telling, and from we will throw light on that one. And participating with this thing, LNT, for example, when they started participating with this particular program, they developed some of the largest vessels which they had never made, the 13.5 millimeter diameter and the equal tall. The safety vessel, the 12.5 millimeter tall uh, diameter, the main vessel, etc., etc., which was to be made to very great precision, which is better than any nuclear standards achieved so far. Since they made it, they could take a step forward and come for uh, come and make almost same thickness, which was to be used for the uh, uh, cryostat. And you know, they they did a shade better than what they had in uh, earlier based on the experience which they have got. So the step-by-step -step program is extremely important. India took all the advantage of the fission and moved to the fusion and also uh, from fusion to uh, this uh, 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 fusion program. So, sir, uh, of course, uh, uh, I'm fully aware that uh, nuclear, uh, that PFDR has not been commissioned, but India definitely rightly is going ahead with this uh, fast breeder reactor program and there will be time when this particular reactor will be will be proved yes there could be always difficulties in the first of first time technology because once we go for commissioning and this is what is happening probably in pfbr i'm very very confident and sure with the guidance of uh, very senior persons like dr kakokar and all those people who are associated today this particular reactor will also be proved but that has been Pathbreaking as far as the technological de development in India is concerned. Sir, I would like to hear from you on this thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this, uh, this kind insight. Uh, over to you, sir. Well, I'm, uh, I think first of all, we should recognize that Dr. Prabhat Kumar is a very unique person. I don't know whether there is anybody other than Prabhat Kumar who has dealt with all the three technologies, heavy water reactor, fast builder reactor, and fusion reactor. Prabhat, you are aware of anybody else? Uh, sir, you have told me earlier also. And uh, I humbly accept this particular thing. Maybe I am the only person. I have not found anybody so later. To recognize, you know, in the, in the technology journey of the country, uh, this is very, very important and particularly since we are talking about a forum of uh, young nuclear scientists. Uh, uh, I think uh, I thought I must, uh, of course, uh, this is not for your sake, Prabhat. This is for the sake of all the, uh, all the audience uh, who are kind of uh, in this, uh, in this meeting. Uh, but, uh, so this is, uh, you know, it. Uh, for example, each one is an is an increment. Uh, and uh, remember, when the heavy water reactor journey started, or for that matter, the first Tarapur reactor was being built, people were ridiculing that India is a bullock cart country, bullock cart technology. There was also a cartoon, and many of uh, some of you might probably remember. R.K. Lakshman had drawn a cartoon where it was a bullock cart on which a sophisticated part was being carried and the wheels of bullock cart were like uh, orbits of electrons. And uh, so that was the depiction. And it, I think uh, that cartoon was a, in, uh, of course, cartoon is for the fun sake, but it had a tremendous message that we are trying to do a really advanced technology in an infrastructure which is primitive. And uh, so we had very carefully chosen heavy water reactor and the whole the system was mastered. And uh, I must tell you here that uh, although it started uh, as a joint collaboration with Canadians, 
the first unit at Rajasthan, first and second two units at Rajasthan, the construction was started as a collaborative effort because the system was not proven even in Canada in those days. Douglas Point was in making and they only had the demonstration reactor. Uh, now, uh, then of course, uh, in between the collaboration came to a halt uh, following the p &E experiment in 1974. And then uh, for us, it was Ekla Chalore. But what I want to inform all of you is uh, sometime uh, in, uh, in my tenure as uh, chairman, I don't remember the year, but between between 2000 and 2009, a group of Canadians, in fact, all the four uh, vice presidents of AECL Canada, uh, they visited together. And of course, they were trying to explore possibility of collaboration. And at that time, they acknowledged that India is now more advanced than Canadians in heavy water technology. So that's the part of learning. I think same thing happened with respect to a BTR, fast reactors. And the first BTR was built with the French collaboration. And uh, then, of course, we got on to PABR and started construction of PABR and all. And uh, we had actually resumed cooperation with the French people again. And uh, several people from Indira Gandhi Center have visited French labs. And some of the instruments built in India, in IGCAR, they were initially tried out in uh, ABTR. But they were also tried out uh, and tested out in, for example, at Phoenix. And uh, so uh, we have this great. Uh, uh, kind of track record of learning and assimilating technology. And I, I would expect that same thing would happen in the context of, in the context of uh, fusion, uh, fusion energy. And I'm looking forward to all of you uh, to make that happen. And I'm sure it will happen one of these days. Sir, uh, if you permit me, I will just uh, add uh, one thing here. Uh, can I speak? For yeah, 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 sure, sir. Yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, you know, during initial stages of the PFBR and after we successfully came out of the uh, tsunami and then we started building very well and we installed safety, built safety vessel and put it, you know, there was one of the visit Dr. M.R. Srinivasan he addressed all of us and he says, I want to give you a word of caution. The project, you can never be very proud that everything is going all right. It may appear everything is going all right, but you never know what surprises suddenly are ahead, which will fall down all of a sudden. And I have realized my, besides tsunami, you know, there's a, one of the landslide which was there between the you know the ma uh, main and power island in between that that one or in the in the sea there was a, some borehole uh, hole and they started dripping inside the tunnel which was being dug and many such events which are there they were all sudden surprises so in the project never be complacent and we have always to be ready to handle any surprises which are ahead and that was the one thing which I never forget actually the statement we have we, he has made be prepared to face all the eventualities, especially first of his, of uh, his type technology. So I thought maybe I'll repair, uh, remember Dr. Martian Hassan those words in this important forum today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this addition. Indeed, uh, I th even I remember when when I visited uh, IGCAR after that, this was the, the story uh, which was really popular and it, it's really necessary for uh, like people to, to know that it's not easy just to go with any any kind of project and these sort of thing delays the thing and uh, but still we need to realize and we are still doing great here um, i want to mention like uh, sir has already mentioned in his book a fire and fury like india has the one of the best technology so far 
and we are doing great if i if i say so to say maybe i am not of that status to to mention it but uh, what i feel uh, being a part of this uh, this industry like uh, it's it's a good thing to to keep going and keep learning as we say learn from the best practices so uh, take uh, an opportunity to to uh, introduce one of the dynamic uh, as i always felt about uh, uh, malhotra sir malhotra sir was the the um, head of public awareness division from uh, da uh, and i have always learned from him uh, about how to uh, basically interact with the public and tell them uh, what we are doing and what we we are uh, uh, a part of and here i want to to request sir to put some insight while he was working with kakotkar sir and uh, his way of life and his 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 interaction with you and and sort of things over to you malodar sir now am i audible yes sir you are audible okay so shall i uh, yes sir go ahead we will take the question okay. later sir so uh, good evening everyone and particularly dr kakotkar and i seek your permission to talk certain things involving you <laughs> malotra you know you have always the power of attorney the today's focus is on dr kakotkar and is on peter uh, and kadras so i will tell an event which has uh, definitely got to do uh, with dr kakotkar reference point is uh, paris airport on the way to katrash but may not have anything to do with either but it, it left a very deep impression on me see somewhere in 2005 or so we were uh, you know uh, those who have visited the headquarter of da in 2003 we started renovation of that old british structure called oic old yacht club and uh, today of course at uh, 2008 onwards the headquarter uh, including sir's office i mean chairman's office is located there so that was under uh, renovation and uh, sir had insisted uh, kapotkar sir that he had made me the coordinator from the user side from dae side so regarding that uh, there was some issue i think the issue is not important on which we uh, his views and my views uh, we were not able to really converse them so there was lot of discussion on them so one day in the evening somewhere around 7 o'clock he simply walked into my room See, his office was on fourth floor my office was on ground floor he simply without announcement he walked into my room and security officer came running the chairman saw this uh, walking towards your room i said okay let him come he came there and he said amalotra just came to discuss something with you and he started discussing and we really both of us we lost count of time at about 9:30 he looked at his watch and he suddenly he was reminded and he said are baap re i have to go to my room and i have to clear some files and then i have to go home i said okay sir your choice so at about 9:30 he left for his room and i left for my house next day i i got ready for my office and coming to office at about i am about to reach the office and my mobile rings and i see dr kakotkar is trying to call me up. i don't know from where i mean i thought he must be in bombay because night uh, 9:30 i have met him at bombay so i take the call and uh, he says malotra where are you i said sir i am on the way and in 5 minutes i am reaching no i need to speak to you for some 10 15 minutes is it all right i said sir just give me 5 minutes i am reaching office i will give you a call from there and he said no no i don't have that much time uh, tum gaadi side mein laga lo and let us speak here right now i said sir where are you i mean very uh, in a general manner i asked him where are you he said i am at a paris here i was you know clean bold he was with me up to 9:30 in the night and he says i have to finish off files then i have to go. i said sir last night uh, what time you boarded the flight and he said nahi nahi oh 
साढ़े दस को मैं घर घर गया खाना खाया एंड अरेज माई बैग एंड आई थिंक वन ओ क्लॉक इफ आई रिमेम्बर करेक्टली वन ओ क्लॉक आई टू के फ्लाइट एंड नाउ आई हैव जस्ट नाउ गोट डाउन एट पेरिस एंड आई हैव गॉट फोर्टी मिनट्स बिफोर द नेक्स्ट फ्लाइट सो आई थॉट लेट एस कंप्लीट दैट डिस्कशन and try to converge on to one point so this teaches a lesson that see though he was not agreeing on a given point with me but he it, you know in his mental diary he has noted down that i have to precipitate this issue and finish it off with mr malhotra so as soon as he gets some time at paris airport he remembers that he calls me up and then of course the problem could not be solved from paris airport uh, we we could solve it um maybe after one more year uh, long discussions so this i wanted to tell that uh, this also gives another message that he gives you total freedom i think i must have enjoyed total freedom of speech many a times he will very enthusiastically you know he will say let us do this event or that event and uh, i will simply put up a point and uh, he will say oh i didn't think of it okay okay then then let us forget about it so you can convince him there is only one way of convincing him and that is by scientific logic and if you are able to convince convince him by scientific logic he is amenable to change otherwise he doesn't appear to be but he can be an adamant person if you are not able to convince him he is quite an adamant person he will he will stick to his guns and i i have one such example i think uh, somewhere in 2008 he uh, you know we had a publication division and we had my division the public awareness division these two were two separate divisions and the gentleman who was heading the publication division he retired and before his retirement itself i had reminded sir couple of occasions that sir you have to get another head for that ah yeah we will get it still time is there but on that last day he called me up from delhi and he told me malotra take charge from uh, this gentleman today it is only for the time being ha do teen din mein dusra kuch arrangement kar de i said okay sir i took charge from that gentleman one week passed and you know this double charge was bothering me and see the requirements are i feel diagonally opposed a public awareness person is not to be found on his seat he should be found amongst the public doing public awareness and a publication man should always be found on his seat editing the uh, uh, publications so these naturally they were they were contradictory to each other so after about one week i went to him and i told said you have told two three days so now one week is over. yeah yeah no, we, i am looking for a person to anyway i'll try to cut short the story like that about 3 months passed and i think i lost my patience and i one day i went to him and i made it very clear sir i am i am suffering like anything uh, please do something about it then he said yeah i am aware that you are suffering okay you give me 48 hours and i will come out with a solution i said okay but by the way you tell me what is your problem then i told him He said, "Okay, I will think about it, and uh, I think I will solve this problem within 48 hours." So after 72 hours, I again went to him because after 48 hours he didn't call me. So after 72 hours, I went to him, and I said, "Sir, what happened? You were told for ah, yeah, yeah. I I have thought about it, and I have come with a solution. Uh, I am there with a solution." So I said, "Okay." I was very excited. So I said, "Sir, what is?" It? uh no no i thought a lot about it and i first thing is malhotra i perfectly agree with you that you are suffering like anything. this is what you told no 3 days back and i am in total agreement that you yes you are suffering and that is why i thought a lot about it and i have come out with a solution again i said sir tell me the solution no sir, in his typical style no uh, the solution is uh, malhotra let me tell you so finally the solution is you continue to suffer and no more discussion about it and i think i retired even after his retirement i retired in 2015 i i was holding both the publications so that is why i told 
he gives you total freedom of expression but if you are not able to convince him he is quite adamant maybe see i have i have plenty of stories but i know there will be time constraint so i thought these two stories probably describe him to some extent you want to hear more you have to indicate thank you thank you sir i think uh... We, we we would love to hear it maybe i i would like to have a dedicated session on it <laughs> uh, but i think uh, i think without I, I without it. me present <laughs> okay <sir. laughs> but i think uh, I, i would love to add one point here i think sometimes uh, maybe you you may correct me if i am wrong sometimes uh, such adamant or i would say it's, it's a determination which which we need to steer through the tough situations like we have in our country and i think uh, uh, sir has done uh, a marvelous job in in that direction but from here because uh, we are limited with the time i would like to go directly in in one of the interesting part i really which i really wanted to discuss here about the sir's uh, personal life and a bit highlight on his journey and uh, his thoughts so two thing i really want to ask sir like uh, very specific one uh, like i remember when we used to do the experiment in jaipur with with dr nair you you are already aware of that once we used to finish that experiment of this thing and we used to have a feeling of like wow you know the feeling of proud in that sort of what were your feeling when you finish the pokhran experiment or test what to say like standing right there at the site uh, this is something uh, i i don't know how how to express it but maybe if you can put some word about it well am i audible yes yes yeah, okay uh i think uh, what i'm going to say will surprise all of you except those who already know and uh, see it is like this uh, you know they uh, we always say you know if you have a eureka moment in your life then certainly it's a matter to be very excited and uh, very surprised and things of that kind but uh, you know it was okay for archimedes or people like that you know if we find out a completely new principle and then you say wow that's it and all i am a person uh, in technology now uh, technology of course uh, technology development has uh, its own challenges and people say in terms of effort uh, the the technology development effort is many times much bigger compared to the this the so called uh, proof of concept uh, stage whatever effort it takes compared to that uh, robust technology is a much bigger effort but having said that uh, it's a it's a calibrated process not that there are no failures failures are there as uh, dr prabhat kumar uh, he was talking about dr shrinivas and speech is very right uh, everything you know we must plan we must make sure that everything goes in accordance to the plan uh, both in terms of uh, achieving the milestones as well as uh, in terms of cost control but complex technology there are surprises and uh, but uh, at the same time that everything goes according to the plan that according to me is not a surprise because if you have done your uh, uh, understanding of science right and if you have done your technology right there cannot be a major surprise if things goes all right you have surprise when things don't go all right as to where did we go wrong so uh, for me the only time when i was uh, very tense or uh, 
what I know, felt a huge sigh of relief after the event was when uh, I was involved in the first experiment in my life, and that was a heat transfer experiment in hall number three, say facility in BARC, where for the first time we had built a high pressure loop, and it was I won't go into the detail, but it was quite extraordinary you know it uh, there are many things which were out of box and for me it was the first time in my life so i actually could not sleep the previous night and uh, so it was a huge sigh of relief once the experiment uh, was successfully carried out but after that uh, Nothing made me tense. Nothing made me surprised because uh, because it had to happen. Now, whether it is uh, the Pokhran uh, experiments of seventy four, ninety eight, completion of Druva, or for that matter, uh, many other projects where I was, of course, indirectly connected. So uh, now I have watched people. Dancing and jumping at Pokhran when the event took place, and I was quite amused, to tell you very frankly. But uh, but that is quite different. I know most of the people are not like that, but that is what I am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, just just uh, I want to discuss about uh, like um, in your book you have mentioned uh, in the about your. Uh, about your family background and all and i really want to highlight about uh, your father sri purushottam uh, kakotkar and your mother uh, kamala kakotkar here because uh, they were associated with the with the gandhi movement and uh, were part of the freedom fighting uh, journey and uh, one thing really want to highlight and i really love to to read about like your mother started a dedicated school for the the daughters of india or daughters of freedom fighters to so to say and this is where your first uh, schooling began uh just would like to hear from you like uh, you your this part of your journey a bit starting from this school and reaching to to this high and uh, what was your vision when you were young like when you were my age or at younger age what was your vision to to see and how you think to you achieved it what were the 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 main motivation and uh, the the projections you had in your life so to say just uh, to you sir well yeah just a little correction the the school for daughters of freedom fighter was the school where my mother studied yes sir so yeah. that was the school in varda and that's the school where my mother studied but Uh, she herself started a montessori school for young kids in a in a small town where actually i was brought up and studied now that was the town uh, where uh, we had gone for the first time she had always also new to that town and uh, you know those were the days when uh, even getting children to school was a problem you know particularly in a backward area there are many in society who feel that education is not faltu hai if somebody is running a shop so my child will also run my shop and and if somebody is kind of doing agriculture or selling vegetable then my child will also do the same thing so there was a reasonable section of the society who did not believe in education uh, uh, so much in the sense uh, you know that well at a given age you must get admitted into the school and nothing of that kind now now here was my mother talking about pre school education Really, primary education, early childhood education, and uh, and she was uh, of course uh, advocating for both the boys and girls 
to kind of uh, come and uh, and kind of learn learn there in this montessori school so it was a huge challenge to go around house by house convince people that it is a good thing and uh, preschool education is uh, is also very important and you must pay attention to this and uh, and in fact uh, i don't remember whether i have written that in the book but my mother used to go to houses of these children if the children are not ready then get them ready and then put them in a bullock cart which was the kind of school bus for <laughs> them to come to the school and get them to school and uh, so that is how she did uh, uh, kind of spread uh, montessori education under some very adverse circumstances you know setting up a montessori school or a, uh, or a kindergarten in a city is a very fashionable thing now it's a, it's in fact a money earning proposition but uh, it was not so in those days and she did set up that and uh, So she was quite a pioneer in that uh, in that respect. Uh, I, of course, happened to be her first student in that uh, Montessori school, and then of course I moved on. The school also has moved on. Today, that school is a full-fledged uh, uh, high school or what you call secondary school, uh, higher secondary school. Uh, so. Uh, i have benefited a lot from uh, from uh, my mother being also my teacher and my mother being also my mentor and uh, and that has helped me a lot a uh, lot in my life my father uh, uh, of course he was also a freedom fighter but he was uh, uh, he was caught uh, in a satyagraha in goa and then the portuguese uh, put him in uh, uh, they sort of uh, arrested him and uh, put him in jail and exiled him to portugal so for 9 years he was in portugal and that was the time when i studied in school so i have very little uh, kind of association with my father uh, after he returned back again he got active because goa was not filled free till that till that time so he again focused on freedom of uh, goa independence of goa and then he got into the politics and all uh, and of course there were strains in the family relations so i didn't see much of my father in that sense so the only uh, only thing was i uh, had the misfortune of uh, Sort of uh, seeing the last of him, just when I was engaged in uh, the the uh, preparation for nuclear tests at at Pokhran, so it was very trying. I couldn't do either very satisfactorily for those two three days, but uh, at least I did whatever minimum I could. So uh, that's the. that's the journey for me of course uh, i also studied in the same small town so i had no concept of uh, what uh, one should be doing one thing was clear that i uh, because beyond high school or secondary school there was no further opportunity in that place so i moved to mumbai my mother also moved to mumbai at that time and then i studied uh, college education in mumbai did my engineering in mumbai and one thing that was clear to me was uh, i don't want to get into a repetitive job in fact jobs were plenty in those days engineering profession was in great demand and particularly mechanical engineering was in huge demand in those days so we used to get letters from companies saying uh, we know you are appeared for exam and you will pass out if you are interested in our company here is a form you fill it up and we'll arrange your interview so that was the scenario but the jobs were essentially industrial engineering marketing uh, and uh, and that kind of thing and i had no interest in any one of them 
so uh, i was looking for a job where there is no repetitive work and that was all the definition i had i didn't know what r and d means or is even at that time but then somebody said no if you go to brc then you'll get a, to do new thing every day and i said yes that is the place for me and then there was no looking back thank you sir thank you so much for for this uh, quick highlight um, I, i would like to add one thing here which which is uh, written uh, in your book it's, it's a complete sentence where you have mentioned that uh, uh, you said your mother was your father mother as well as your teacher and i i really yes. connected it uh, it's it's a really wonderful statement and uh, i i want to make one one uh, statement here like mostly uh if i would say you are the mama's boy and uh, in 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 this generation mama's boy is are considered like rojesh sara bhai who is a, a character in a in a in a in a tv tv series i would say like uh, it's better to to set an example of a mama's boy like uh, dr kakutkar we have here and uh, it, it it's a great great thing to learn from your uh, family from your uh, entire life i think uh i would say uh, we we can't have enough time to 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 just stop listening to you uh but uh, with with the limit of time i i think uh, yeah. we should uh, conclude this session but just a small ceremony i i want to have you from here sir like uh, iyns is uh, introducing uh, its newsletter so if you could uh, inaugurate it uh, for us so it will be nice with your permission yeah how do i do that uh we we have a we will uh, share the screen on on the website okay. just uh, just acknowledge it can we have the screen please so uh, this is the uh, newsletter which which uh, is the first newsletter from uh, iyns named as nuclear news and it is a uh, sir if you could dedicate it to the to our website it will be available on our website from now onwards a few words wonderful from- compliments to you uh, uh, i have to press something somewhere or no, i just okay. acknowledge it's, it's done okay. you just acknowledge so because- wonderful i think compliments to you for uh, for uh, starting this uh, newsletter and uh, let me use this occasion to express my greetings and compliments to uh, the entire iyns community uh, i know uh, you all uh, come from very diverse background and uh, you have uh, very diverse interests uh, but one thing that connects all of you is that word nuclear and uh, uh, i uh, uh, want to make a small comment uh, and that is uh, you know uh, the nuclear world where uh, for example people in the street uh, they get all kinds of notion and so public awareness is a big effort uh, malotra is here so he can uh, tell you how herculean task that is to convince people uh, about uh, nuclear awareness and uh, so all of you are in fact a part of this nuclear awareness activity uh, which is uh, which is extremely important and it's it's just wonderful but at the same time uh, uh, whenever it comes to doing big things important things uh, then it seems to me that you have to take recourse to nuclear even a, uh, a common man uh, whatever notion uh, he or she may have when it comes to cancer treatment and if the doctor prescribes uh, radiation therapy Uh, yes. they will very easily embrace that uh, fully knowing that that's a nuclear phenomena uh, 
and i think something like that is happening in terms of nuclear energy now i only yesterday i heard that uh, uh, it's i think in us which which provides finance for energy systems and uh, they have now earlier uh, an exception for nuclear no such uh, soft soft loan loan or something, something. But realizing the importance of nuclear, nuclear to provide, to provide clean energy, clean energy, carbon, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide emission, emission, free energy, free energy uh, uh, realizing the realizing the importance of nuclear, nuclear, nuclear for sustainable, sustainable growth, and growth, all that, all that. So nuclear, so energy, nuclear energy has, has, by, has by, bank, by the bank has classified, has classified as a sustainable energy source, and uh, uh, and uh, we now you can now you can uh, get. Uh, in fact, it, in nuclear, fact energy, it, nuclear energy is eligible for the, the, the facilities, facilities, soft loan facilities, loan facilities from that bank. From that bank. And, and which I think, I think is a big, big, uh, big transition, transition for, for, for nuclear. nuclear. So, so all, all I want to say is uh, all important things have challenges while living, but that should not distract us and the time comes when the world embraces simply because whatever you are doc- talking or whatever you are doing is right so with these words i compliment all of you once again to uh, iyns and the uh, compliment all of you for starting this newsletter thank you technical glitch Dr. Kakupkar was thanked for his gracious remarks and comments by me on behalf of IYNS. Following the online trends of uh, nominating others, I asked Sir to nominate three other scientists that uh, he and our viewers would like to see on uh, our upcoming episodes. He nominated Dr. S. Banerjee, who is the former Atomic Energy Commission Chairman. Dr. R. Chindambaram, who is the former Principal Scientific Advisor to the Prime Minister of India and also known as the Pokharan Man and Dr. K. Sivan, who is the present Chairman of ISRO and the Chandrayaan 2 last year launched uh, under his Chairmanship. Here I'd like to thank all the guests and the speakers who appeared on our show whether live or via pre-recorded uh, video messages. I'd also like to thank uh, our viewers for their kind support and uh, we'll see you soon for the next episode which will be live streamed during the last week of August. Thank you to the team IYNS for coordinating this event. Take care and stay safe. <laughs>